malware analysis and for malware detection and classification. So the first paper is presented by Kan Yuan. Floor is yours. So hello everyone. Um, I'm glad here to present our recent work about the IOC gathering from open source uh, data source. And this is a joint work by Indiana University and the Georgia Institution of Technology. I'm honored to work with my fantastic colleagues, uh, Xiao Jing, Professor Wang, Zhou Lu Yi, and uh, Professor Bei Yan. So just as CSI searched the crime scene for the evidence to understand and recover the criminal procedure, um, so do the security experts actively collect those forensic artifacts. Um, these forensic artifacts are called indicator of compromise. Uh, common IOCs include uh, uh, IP address, domain name of malicious website, the fire hash of the malicious fires, and uh, a lot of other things. These IOCs are so important because they can not only be directly used by the automatic uh, defense system to uh, detect the existing or the early sign of the future attack, they can, on, uh, they can also be used by the security analyst to, to uh, use to understand and uh, to uh, understand the um, current threats and understand our enemies. In recent years, IOCs are more easily accessible uh, from open data source. As an example, uh, we calculate the monthly number of the articles talking about IOCs from 45 blogs um, from 2003 to 2016. And uh, you can see the, um, the dramatic increase in the number. Now the number is almost five times as much as uh, it was 10 years ago. So these IOCs today can be accessed from blogs, um, web forums, uh, social networks, etc. And uh, on the contrary of this explosively uh, increasing in the number of um, I, uh, IOC data sources, a lot of security companies and the security researchers still use the most traditional way to collect them. They use human force to collect them. Um, Maybe in the past it was just inefficient, but we believe in now and in the future it would be um, impossible. That's why we need to automate this process, and uh, we are going. Uh, our work is going to deal with this problem. So to bootstrap this um, task, we choose the blogs as our uh, main data source because blogs usually contains the descriptions of the attacks, so it uh, contains the rich details of these uh, malicious activities, and we have a better chance to find IOCs from them. Uh, however, the blogs that are written in uh, natural languages. They are not structured data, and it's not easy to extract the information from them. One possible way to do that is to d conduct a string format match. Um, for example, using some regular expression to get all the, the strings uh, like IP address or domain name, but this would give us a very high false positive because they, uh, not all the IP address or domain names showed up in the article are the IOCs. They may be just an example. So, the reason why um, this will give us a high, pos high false positive is that they didn't use the um, context information to describe, uh, describe these uh, IOC candidates. So in order to make use of these context information, um, one way is to use information extraction. However, um, today's information extraction tools are not good enough for this purpose because um, one, we, one, one reason is that it's really domain sensitive, so you cannot guarantee it can be um, modified to use in the domain of security. 
And another one reason is uh, they don't have very good performance. Uh, as the recent re uh, literature shows, um, it usually have a precision of 50% to 90%, and uh, the coverage from 10% to 50%. That is far from satisfying. So since current tools don't work, so we have to come up with our new method to deal with this problem. Um, we call it IAS. It's an innovi innovation solution for fully automatic IOC extraction. It provides us an and it helped to provide us a better understanding of the relationship, uh, impact, evolution, and the quality of the IOCs on the technical blocks. So this picture shows um, what the IAs can do. You input a blog post, and it will generate a file in the open IOC format. So for those who don't uh, familiar with, uh, who, who are not familiar with open IOC, you don't need to worry about that. But it only need to know that it not only document the IOC itself, it also document the context, um, which is uh, shown in the blue box. Uh, it, it's, it shows that this IOC, uh, what type of this IOC is. So how on earth do we do that? Um, Let's see a few examples. We find um, actually uh, on, the, on the blog post, these IOCs are documented in a predictable way. Um, for example, in the first sentence, uh, you can see the IOC comes along with the word register key. And the second one, the IOC comes with the word attachment. So we find that in almost all cases, IOCs are documented with the context terms, what we call it. They are usually um, technology terms, um, such as attachment, malware, or register keys. And not, they don't not, uh, just come along. They have some um, stable grammatic relation. For example, in the first and sec second sentence, they are the compounds. And we find a few patterns among these relations, and they are very stable uh, among all the blog articles. So with this observation, we are going to uh, find a way to extract these IOCs from blog articles. Um, first of all, we searched anchor words. Then this is two parts. The one is the context, term, as we just mentioned. And the second one is the IOC-like strings. This can be uh, found using uh, regular expressions. So this step is to locate the candidates of IOCs. However, we don't know whether it's a genuine IOC or not. So we use the uh, machine learning method to check the similarity be between these, the relation between these anchor words. Um, with the known relations we have already learned from our test set. So I will give you an overview our, of our system. First is part is the blog scrapper. It um, collects the uh, uh, articles from the blogs, and these articles are sent to the next part, the blog preprocessor. Um, the preprocessor actually um, clean the HTML files to a clean article text and then send to the relevant content picker. The relevant content picker um, find all the IOC candidates with the method we just talked about and send those 10 candidates to the relation checker. The relation checker um, use um, graph mining technology to check the relations and compare them t with the uh, known relation we have already learned to determine whether it's a genuine IOC or not. Then the true IOCs will be sent to the IOC generator to generate the file of open IOC. So this is the um, overview, and I will give you a detailed uh, implementation of the system. Uh, first is the blog scraper. It conduct a breadth first clouding. Uh, also, it do uh, article template matching. That means uh, not all the art, uh, not all the web pages on a blog website are the blog articles. They may have archive page. They may have a login page, 
So we don't need these pages. So we have to find a way to exclude all these pages and only keep the article pages. So in this way, we, um, can, we are able to collect 71,000 articles from 45 technical blogs. And these blogs are then sent to the blog preprocessor. The preprocessor does three things. The first one is remove the um, template of the HTML file. Uh, we use the method proposed in 2013. It's called the composite importance. And then we do the um, text converting because uh, HTML files usually contain some object that is not text. And also a few uh, reports are written in the PDF, so we need to convert them to the text. And after that, we do a topic classifier because um, a lot of articles, they are on the technical blogs, but they don't talk about the IOCs. We don't need them. So we use three features, the topic words, the article length, and the, the dictionary word density to filter them out. So the rest of the uh, articles are then sent to the relevant content picker. And the first thing the relevant content picker does is to um, split them into sentences. Then it can a regular expression match and the context match. We used 19 regular expressions we designed ourselves to uh, locate the 19 classes of IOC candidates. And uh, we used the uh, list of contact terms we get from the documentation of open IOC. And we perform a, uh, we use a tool called the semantic link to find the words that relate to these uh, terms and uh, to explain them. So we got f uh, f more than 5,000 contact terms in total. So after we find those sentences that contains not only the uh, IOC candidate, but also the context term, it would, send, uh, it would be sent to the dependency parser. So the dependency parser does a few things. The first thing is to con convert the sentence to the dependency graph. Uh, the dependency graph uses dependence to represent the gra grammatic uh, relation between two tokens. So I'll give you an example. For example, this sentence, um, if we generate the dependency graph, it would be like this. And you see those arrows. For example, um, there is an edge from download to fire, and with the weight the OBJ, that means file, is the direct object of the verb um, downloads. So that indicates their grammatic relation. And the, the other thing we do is to um, extract the shortest path from this dependency graph. The reason we do that is um, we believe that the most uh, important information are included in this path, and a uh, few um, peer researchers also agree with our point. So these uh, shortest paths are then sent to the relation checker. Uh, no, are then um, to be used to uh, to do the uh, to do the prediction by uh, graph mining method. So we use the uh, special graph kernel called the direct product kernel. It measures the similarity uh, of the direct weighted graph to see uh, by calculating how many random walks with identical uh, label sequence occurred in both graphs. So with a more identical label sequence appear in both graphs, the two graphs are more similar. Um, the reason we do that is um, we can train, uh, we can use our training data to get a list of the uh, stable and uh, fixed relation be uh, from known IOC sentences. And uh, by calculating how similar this new IOC candidate's relation uh, to the known pattern, we are able to see like whether it's an IOC or not. Then these confirmed IOCs are sent to the IOC generator. Um, it generates the uh, open IOC formatted files accordingly. 
then we evaluate our system with a few data, uh, with two data, two different data sets. One is the label data set. It contains 450 articles. Uh, from them, we are able to extract 1,500 true IOC sentences and 3,000 false IOC sentences. That means the sentence uh, con uh, contains some IOC candidate, but it's not a true IOC. And that's a data set is uh, unknown data set. So we get 71,000 articles from 45 technical blogs. So the result is shown in the, this slide. First, we um, evaluate our topic classifier. And the precision and records are pretty good. Then we use our label data set to um, evaluate our uh, RC, uh, RCP and the RC, that means relevant content picker and uh, uh, relation checker. So it gives uh, 98 precision and 94, uh, 92 records. And on the unknown set, we random sampling a subset of them, and we get a precision of 95% and a recall of 90%. So I would say the results are really impressive. So to, um, we further compare our system with some um, other system that is aimed to do the same thing. The first system is the alien vows uh, open thread exchange. It's and we don't know exactly how they do that, but we believe they only use the regular expression match. Uh, the other tool is Stanford's uh, and ER. It's used to extract the named entities. Uh, we are able to show that our re uh, result is much better than these two systems. So now that we have, ver uh, we have verified the effectiveness of our system, we are able to use this system to help us to better understand those IOCs on the technical blocks. So let me summarize what we have now. We have 71 articles from 45 blocks, and uh, we got 20,000 of them are IOC related, and we are able to extract 900,000 IOCs from them. So we are going to answer the following four questions. How are they related to each other? What, wh how do they evolve over time? What is their impact on security protection? And what is the quality of the intelligence sources? So the first question is their relationship. So we do a correlation analysis. Um, Particularly, we class them according to um, infrastructure-related infrastructure related IOCs, uh, including IPs, registers, emails, and the domain names. So we are able to get 527 clusters uh, with at least three articles. And uh, we list the uh, clusters with the largest number of articles uh, in the following table. And we can see that uh, the largest cluster contains almost 400 articles. And it actually um, does a lot of different things. It um, distributes malware, it sends spam emails, it um, compromises legitimate websites. Um, and I, uh, we believe the, these things, uh, the relation between them are previously unknown. At least um, they are not totally unknown before because we calculate the number of references. That number shows how many articles re refers to another article in the same clusters. And we are able to see that this number is really small with respect to the number of articles. That means the author of these articles doesn't know um, these IOCs are related to the others that was reported by other uh, bloggers. Also, we want to see how they evolve. Um, we calculate the decay time for each IOC. Uh, not each IOC, we actually focus on the uh, attack vector IOCs, which includes malware hash um, vulnerability CVE number. Uh, registry, content, uh, registry content. 
So we are able to see most um, attack vectors have very short de decay time. And that means they, they have very low number of conservative months uh, was documented uh, in at least blog. But we did find a few um, IOCs have a very long decay time. For example, uh, we find the CVE design, the 120158, keeps showing up for four years despite a few receases. So it was reported to um, be related to a few famous APT attacks, uh, a few spell phishing attacks, and some general malware distribution from 2012 to 2015. From this table, we also find that the number of decay time is negatively related to the number of uh, average article per month. That indicates that the publication of such articles talking about IOCs do have an impact on the um, security, uh, security protection. So to better understand their impact, we actually use two tools. We use CleanMX and the virus total. We uh, submit our funded IOCs to them and uh, find out what is the first date these IOCs appeared on these two systems. And we compare them to the date that the article was published. And we are able to draw the following graph. We are able to see that. Um, for harsh, uh, the security industry respond to that really fast. But for IPs and the domains, it's relatively slow. But in a word, the, uh, the security industry does a good job. Last but not least, we are um, trying to understand the, the quality of uh, intelligence sources. We use three criteria. Timeliness, uh, that means how many IOCs are funded by some blog at, for the first time. And the completeness, that means um, how many uh, IOCs are funded by one blog re with respect to all the IOCs in the cluster and the robust IOCs. Because we find some IOCs are really robust in the cluster and uh, robust over time. For example, the C2 servers or the registry emails. So we believe that finding out these robust IOCs was the most important task because find them can uh, take down a whole, uh, whole campaign. So we use these three criteria to analysis the block on uh, the intelligence source we have. And here's a few winners. So the number of covered IOCs, that is the completeness of IOCs, um, the tau security is the best. And the web root gives the largest number of the completeness of IOC item. That means the different types of IOCs. And the hexacom gives the mostly uh, timely IOCs and um, Palo Alto gives us the largest number of robust IOCs. So in conclusion, we present the IAs, which is an innovation solution for fully automatic IOC extraction. However, we believe the contribu uh, contrib contribution of research is beyond the technique itself. Um, we've learned more important things from that. For example, we know that open source IOCs do have a huge impact on the security protection. Uh, we also know that with a proper tool to collect and con connect those IOCs, we can get a better understanding of the land scope of current threat, and we can better know our uh, adversaries. But most importantly is that although the Existing NLP techniques cannot be directly used in the scope of security, but we sh reveal the potential of them that um, with proper tuning, they can be used as our weapon to win the war of the cyber crime. So 
um, this is not just limited to the IOC extraction or the uh, intelligence gathering. There will be more applications of NLP techniques in the security research. For example, uh, in the next talk, um, Future Smith will show us how to use NLP techniques to um, do the automatically feature engineering. And we believe that in the future, this will be a hot topic uh, in the security research. Thank you. Yeah, go. Uh, so, uh, Giovanni Vigna from UCSB. Um, I have a question. Do you have any uh, evaluation of how much faster you were getting to discovering malicious Oh, activity. yes, 